Hi everyone, it's Gail. I am here today to uh, show you how I made these little pieces that I put on these journaling cards. I had several, several viewers request it. So I thought we'd do that. Let me say hi and hugs first to Kitty at Susie's Cottage, Anita and Frankie. Thank you so much for watching and for your nice comments. And so, um, yeah, we're going to do that. And then I don't know that that will take us the whole hour. So we may play with some other stuff too. So, um, I make these little, um, these little things with a base of Ada cloth, which is, um, cross stitch fabric. And I had a little hunk of it given to me in happy mail and it's perfect for this. These are the last pieces I have left. <laughs> so very sad about that. But I, I suppose I could find some more at Joann's or somewhere. So I kind of cut them about this size to fit. These are the um, Tim Holtz journaling cards type cards. And um, yeah, so kind of made them about that size. I think I'm going to go with one of the smaller ones here. And um, I put these aside. Got a couple more examples here. This one, I didn't use Ada cloth on the back and, and it's just fine. It reminds me more of a fabric snippet though. And I do like having a base, but I think you could use coffee dyed muslin or, or other fabrics for the base too. I just really like this Ada cloth, but that's okay. We'll, we'll figure something else out when it's gone. So, uh, first things first, kind of figure out some pieces to put on it of some sort. And so I just cut them about the length of the, of the eight of cloth. We'll do that one. And what else should we do? Um, I might do this one has... I really use just scraps normally. These these couple were um were torn into uh frayed fabric trims, but I think I might put that one there. And then um so I just kind of layer those side by side like like this. Right, and I just decide which way I like it the best. I might like it like that. And then I take a small square and go kind of on the top, like as you can see here. Let's see with the small one on the top. Oh, and I should say these were um these were inspired by actually I think this is one of theirs. Uh two sisters general store on Etsy. I, I bought these from her and then I've just begun making my own. So, okay. Um, what do we want for the little, I kind of like a little something shabby -shiki. Okay. We're going to just use this and I'll cut it down some. And, uh, yeah. And then, um, and then I just, kind of hold it together and I start the stitching and slow stitching. Yeah. Won't that be fun? Um, slow stitching is really, uh, my, my friend Lynn got a great description of it. It's embroidery with no pattern basically. And so, you know, you can do flowers, you can do knots, you can do whatever on um, these. I just do a running stitch. So, um, so there's that one. That's how I layer them up. Now, <laughs> this is my second go at this video because, oh my gosh, this piece of string just wants to tangle on me so badly. So we're going to see how far we get with this this time. So all I do is just hold it. I don't glue it or anything and I hold it and I just start going along with the running stitch. I try to make my rows as straight as possible, but if they're not, I don't worry about it. It's supposed to be kind of funky and 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 fun. 
okay, if this string doesn't work this time, I'm going to get a new piece. And I should, there we go. I think it's going to pull through okay. It's like it's getting one string messed up from the others. Okay, let me move you in a little bit so you can see better. Okay, hopefully I can stay right about there. So I just go down the one side, you know, I have it knotted and I go down the one side and then I just go over a little bit and I start down the other side. Seriously, guys, I am struggling with this. Oh, I, um, yeah, I had to start over the video. That hasn't happened to me in literally years. I was just like, okay, this, this thread is way too knotted for me to continue. <laughs> oh, but, but anyway, and then you just, you just continue to stitch. So I have stories to tell while I stitch and hopefully I'm in camera. Oh, I am. Gosh, my hands look gigantic. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to back out a little bit. That's just, that's just too close. And you can see, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just doing a straight stitch. Um, so we'll finish this piece and I'll, I'll tell you my little story. So, um, I have forgotten to tell you guys that the day after, or it may have been two days after, Jimmy Joe went to college, which if you don't know what I'm talking about with Jimmy Go Joe going to college, I do have a video called Update Jimmy Joe Goes to College. So you can catch up on that. But anyway, um, uh, I was in my breakfast nook, looked out the window, and there was a bunny. He was sitting on our cobblestone patio and he just kind of stood there and looked at me in the window and then he just sort of sauntered if a bunny can saunter um you know not not hopping like his life depended on it or anything just kind of hippity hopped over to the deck and went on the deck and then went on his way but um if you've watched me for a long time, you know that bunnies are kind of my spirit animal. And when they appear, it's always to kind of reassure me that things are as they should be. And I honestly, I couldn't believe it when I looked out and there he was. I was like, oh, yay. So um, what reminded me to tell you guys that story was Mike and I went for a walk just before, um, just before I came in to do this video. And, um, it feels weird to walk without Jimmy, really, it does. But, um, but all is as it should be. Um, I, I have had a lot of you ask about getting updates on Jimmy and I apologize, but that's, it's not possible. We, we signed him over to the college, so, but. You know, in some ways, that's okay, too, because I know he's in good hands. I know he's learning lots of great stuff, and I know in the spring he will be just um, just ready for, for his person that he's going to help th through being a service dog. So, anyways, just just had to tell you about the bunny and and let you know why I'm not updating you is because I'm not updated. I, I don't know who has him, you know, which student has him. I'm, you know, we're, we're not allowed to bug him, you know. They just, he needs to be their dog now and, um, and get trained up as he's, as he's supposed to. So there's that. So anyways, I had to tell you the bunny story because it's just too fun. And I have my bunny blankie on the back of my chair now, on the back of my crafting chair from Carol. Carol, thank you for my bunny blankie. I love it. Um, 
I don't know if you knew this, Carol, but I collect quilts. I have some wonderful old quilts from the 1930s. You know, I used to have, ow. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, um, I used to have a little store that was in a quaint little area of town here where I um, reinvigorated furniture and I sold vintage things and I did that for several years and then I um, went to uh, having a booth at the local antique mall but um, yeah so these were blankets that were kind of left from those days because I had a I had a guy contact me um, and ask if his wife wanted to get rid of her quilt collection. I was like, yes, score. So um, he brought this whole collection. He said some of them were from the 20s and 30s uh, from someplace in Texas. So I don't know, but... Um, but it was kind of funny because, I don't know, it was funny to me because I collect them, but quilts just didn't sell well at the antique mall for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, I had some really neat ones. I still do have them. I have them, um, I have an old wooden barrel that's kind of big, and um, so I have them kind of rolled up. And standing on end in that on that in our TV room and I really oops I really do enjoy I don't know just my grandma was a quilter and so um, I really enjoyed that oh that reminds me so when this the day that this video airs I also need to pick the winner of the 40,000 subby giveaway and I want to say to you all thank you so much for sharing your stories of people who have inspired you in your creativity and stuff it was super fun to to look at all those comments okay so that one's done so then all I'm going to do is just grab the eight of cloth and just do a little a little knot and I'll probably I'll go through go through twice and hope this works out since this oh it did this yarn or uh, thread has been giving me such fits okay so that one is done um this one really have a turquoise I don't think oh I do it's just a dark turquoise ooh what if I look at this awesome bag of um, embroidery embroidery floss that I got at a um, at a garage sale for four dollars all these I was looking at that no care for it don't care for it maybe pink pink's good okay my watch is dinging at me that's distracting so embroidery floss comes as six um six six threads to the one thread you know when it comes off of the skein there's six and so i split it into two is what i do and um and then all my little pieces that are three are kind of living over here right now but um let me do this i have to use one of these because i have a very small eye in this needle and i'm i we'd be here till next month if i tried to do this without this handy little device here okay so i just thought we might do a little on this one too. Um, and then I will pick this stuff, up, this stuff up, which is why I just brought over my mat that it was on on the other table. Just brought it over. I have my friend coming over to 
craft. So see how it's layered. See that? Well, I'm just going to go up and catch this first bit here in the first row. And then we'll catch the other one as we go up the piece. But I just go in, out, in, out. It's, you know, there's nothing to it. Because um, I have embroidered. I, I have an embroidery scarf that is, I, I would say half done, but I don't even think it's that much. It's kind of one of those things where I lost interest. <laughs> was a little too precise for me. So this is much better for me, just going up and down, up and down. The doorbell just rang. I hear my husband going to answer. It's probably UPS or something. But, um, yeah. So anyways, this, this suits me better. I can just randomly pop these little rows down and... Not worry, be, just don't have to worry about being so precise. I'm not good at precise. Which is also, I mean, I used to do scrapbooking too, and it just, I don't know, it just wasn't, I again, it's precise, kind of. I don't know. And, and you may disagree with me. I mean, maybe there are scrapbookers out there that aren't precise, but I guess the creative memory parties that I had been to and stuff, it felt precise to me. So, I, and you know, I get easily discouraged when things have to be perfect. Okay, so then I'm just going to go over go over a bit. And yeah, so anyways, anyway, all that to say, so I will say creative memories parties did not, weren't my, one of my inspirations because, oh, they just discouraged me. I mean, I, I tried and I, I got some pages done in some albums uh, for memories, but I was gonna, I was going to do a whole book on my son's life. And eh, it just wasn't my thing. Junk journals just have captured me like nothing else. And I think it's because you can incorporate everything into it. You know, you can do mixed media. You can do sewing, um, whether by machine or by hand. Um, I, uh, painting, you know, I just feel like there's a lot of the other arts and crafts that can be incorporated into journals. So, I don't know, makes it fun. But I really, really enjoyed reading all the entries for the giveaway where you talked about your inspirations. We are going to finish this one, and then we are going to go on to something else. Um, this is a great... Uh, great little craft if you're going to craft with friends, though. Um, that's when I get most of this done is when my, when my friends come over for now socially distanced <laughs> crafting and we can just visit and we can sew and it's just all good can hop up from it and, you know, and remember where you're at. No problem there. All that kind of stuff. So, okay, so I'm going to do one more row just down the edge of this floral piece. And that is going to be that. That's going to be that little piece. I mean, I could go down here too, but I kind of want the the text to show so I think I won't so so yeah it was it was good to be able to catch up on a few things while I was sewing these two pieces I'm excited this one's going to be good for uh, like a shabby chic journal
Okay, yep, I'm just going to stop right there on that one. Call that good. All right, and so that's it. So I hope that helped those that asked and, asked and wanted to know how I did these. So there you have it. All righty, let's um, just give me one second. You guys can talk amongst yourselves and I will move this stuff over to my other table and we'll get... Okay, so yesterday I showed you these um, these covers. I think I'd kind of like to get them cut down and just ready to ready to go. So I'm gonna want these 12 by nine. So they'll be the covers for a, a nine by six journal. And so I kind of have to decide what I want to do on the edges. And I might need my big cutter, which is buried, but I can get it. I think I'm going to use this big cutter, which this, I love this cutter because it, it goes through tough things very well. And um, so... This, this cutter's on my, on my website, on my Gail's favorite things. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball straight. And I'm going to give that a cut. And it just cuts through the fabric and the, um, all the layers of napkins are just great. So, okay, so now this can go over to 12. Line that up on 12. And I'm just going to have this little strip that's going to get cut off, which I don't know. I maybe could do something with that. I have no idea what. I might save it for a little bit until I decide if there's something I can do with it. Okay, then these sides, I think I'm going to, let's see. was the side I lined up so that's straighter I may have to straighten this out a little bit okay so I'm going to take off where it's kind of goofy on there and then we'll measure nine yep gonna go with that nine right there strip too. I mean they're kind of cool but I don't know. It's I like them. I like the texture of them you know. Okay so this this doesn't look straight to me so I think what I'm going to do is just lay it down. Well, it's not horribly bad. Maybe it's just the way the napkins are. It doesn't look too bad. Okay so then I am just going to line that up Fold it and kind of use my bone folder a little bit. And there's our cover. And we can put some metal book corners on it, whatever. I'm really happy with how the birds kind of came out in the middle. So there's that one ready to go. Love it. Let's do Santa Claus here. Okay, I've made the decision. Those strips are going in the garbage. I'm trying to pare down my strips. Remember that, Gail? You're trying to pare down. All right. So I just kind of want to take off the edge here. The funky, funky edge where the um, 
where the napkins flop over. Okay, so then we can go 12. Just lining her up straight. Okay. Got that. And then here. I think I kind of want to go maybe like a half inch. Like about right there. Straight. I think we're pretty good. Okay. I'm going to go for it. And then this way we want to be nine inches, right? And that'll be just fine. Let's just make sure it's straight. Okay. Awesome. Okay, there is Santa. So there is one of my journal covers. I don't know if Dee Dee Fargo is going to do covers in her... Um, don't freak out before Christmas thing, but if she doesn't, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's so cute. Okay, so that's ready. Let's see. This guy was still a little wet this morning, so I think he's pretty well dried now, though. Okay. So let's see. I just want the very edge here because kind of line that up a little close, I feel like, but okay. Okay. And so then we want to go 12 this away. Thanks for hanging out with me while I'm getting some stuff done. This is awesome. Again, I'm going to kind of go a half an inch over on this side, I think, which lines up about right, right there. Okay, and then this way, nine. Line that baby up, and boom. Just like that. Let me push this over on the other table. And we have Christmas cover number two. And once you get going, other things can be done to these covers, of course. You could put you could put more um uh, more napkins on them if you wanted to, if there was like something you wanted to do right in this area or something like that, but awesome. So look at this guys. Got all three, I got two Christmases and this one, and I used up some scraps. I have way more scraps, so I should make some more. Okay. So how are we doing time wise as far as that goes? Oh, geez. We only in a half an hour. That is awesome. Okay, so what do I want to do over here? I wanted to, this is Happy Meal from yesterday, and I know there was some kind of fun things to play with here. Um, this was a cool, cool one from Nikki that um, has the, has a pocket on this side. Maybe we can figure out how she made that, huh? So that'd be an option. There's things here. I was thinking about using those as templates. There's some really cute um, clusters that she made. 
And I'm going to keep all these sacks too because I think I can collage over them and or use the, the stuffed pocket thing. Some awesome, awesome things. Just awesome. Oh yeah, those are those. These are these. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So that is Angel Row by Nikki. And then this one from Penny had some good um, book pages in it, I think. Um, these paper doll ones are cool. I might not want to cover those up so much, though. And then there's the, yeah. So let's try and make one of Nikki's pockets with one of Penny's papers. Okay, so how about we put this guy on the inside? <laughs> I'm sure he's a very nice man. <laughs> sure, I'm sure of it. Okay, so how'd you do this? Nikki, how'd you do it? Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I think so. Maybe she this way first and then like this I think I feel like that's what she did and then this side over here becomes the pocket I'm, hmm. See how this is on the fold? I want this side to be on the fold too. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Okay, in half and like that. Maybe we just collage a piece of paper over it. That'd be the easiest. Okay, that's what we'll do. Okay, so then if we then if we glue here, then this will be a pocket. It could actually be a double pocket. This could be a pocket there and a pocket there. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Okay, so we need some collage paper, don't we? Uh I don't know what I have over here in my in my scraps, but let's oh let's do one. Let's do one with some Florentine paper maybe or something. Okay, we'll just leave the scraps out. I really like this this uh, whatever language this is paper too though. this is for no particular <laughs> no particular journal or anything I'm just you know what I'm gonna do is just cut this right along this edge and then Of want them, I think I kind of want them both to be covered on that edge. I'm just gonna do that. Don't know, don't know what I'm doing, just playing, guys. That's all. Nikki's probably cracking up at 
my <laughs> ineptitude here. Let's see, I have a glue book over there. I need some glue though, would be helpful. My husband's chopping veggies up there. Yay. Oh, he's gonna make uh, sauteed vegetables, I think, for dinner tonight. Yum. That will be yummy. Just kind of do that. Okay, cut that off. And then I might cut another little bit to do the back of it. here. Okay. And that'll go along here. Or do I like that better? It's not going to show a whole lot, but when you open the pocket, it will. Okay, let's just put that down. Well, you got me thinking anyway, Nikki on this one. Need to go at an angle there. That's the part that's going to be glued down anyway. See if we can salvage a little scrap. I, this Florentine paper is like gold, so yes, I will use those little, those little bitty scraps. Okay, now I'm going to glue this edge. Actually, I'm going to glue this edge and then this edge. And um, we'll use art glitter glue for that. So we got right into it with this video, didn't we? Of course, I, for me, I had already been into it doing the first video about slow stitching. Oh my gosh. I could not believe how stubborn that thread was being. It was just not giving me an inch. So it's like, no, nah, I need to just start the video over. It's got pretty well second time around. <laughs> At least we got that viewer request taken care of, didn't we? Okay. So so now, so now, so now, I kind of want this birdie. Oh, birdie. I might have to chop off his feet so that I don't have to chop off his... Yeah, I think so. I think right about there. I'm going to use my tear ruler wherever it is. Okay. Just going to kind of tear off. Ouchie, sorry, buddy. I have to move that over a little bit. Okay. Okay, actually, I think I'm just going to tear off right by his beak. <clears throat> and then I'm going to actually tear this edge. I'm just going to. Tiny bit there. That will work. Um, had some of the treats that we had when my son was here. For lunch, I had made a cheese ball, which is his favorite. He loves that. And so I made a cheese ball. And so I had that and crackers for lunch. And it was so good. But I'm finding that mid-afternoon, I'm hungry. <laughs> Get that edge over to 
where my birdie's beak is safe. I'm looking at these little things from Nikki. Could maybe put one of those right there, huh? I think I will. Let's just see what the other ones look like for fun. Oh, actually, that's kind of nice because there's a purple flower right there. I'm glad I, glad I checked. Okay, well that's super fun. Um, I think I'm gonna dull down that white. It was kind of shiny white. Dull down that a little bit, and then put that right there. And what a cute pocket. That's a great idea, Nikki, to have the opening at the side. I think that's an awesome idea. I I haven't seen that before. You guys may have. Um, but I think it might be a idea unique to Nikki. I don't know if I made it right, but it's going to work. So we'll glue this down to the page. And then we've got a little pocket little pocket right here and then it'll be glued down and it'll have a pocket there super fun okay Nikki I need to keep this in my um, idea file and put your name on it so I can give credit where credit is due okay I don't know. A, she used kind of a slick page and it doesn't want to glue down super bad. Okay. Right? Is this a Nikki idea? Yeah, I think this was a Nikki idea. I, I believe so. Or was this a Penny idea? See how I get so confused, you guys? I just have two people's happy mails out here and I'm all confused. But I think this is one was Nikki. Okay, I'm going to put it over there. Okay, I'm very happy with that, though. Very happy. Okay, so then the other thing I was thinking of playing with, if we have time, we have a few minutes, don't we, is, um, is these password things that Penny sent. I had this game when I was a little girl. So I want to back it. Um, what do I have that's just waiting, waiting to be a back? I have a piece of coffee dyed paper. That'll work. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a bunch of glue on this. Oops, gotta be careful or it's gonna dig. I guess I don't need to worry about the sides so much because I can sew it. I think I'm going to go right down here because that's got a fun pattern to it. Just wrap like that. And then we can kind of collage on it. That'd be fun. And I feel like if you were doing a vintage journal, like a 60s, 70s journal, you could leave some of the password word through and just because that's that was its era. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's smooth out a couple of the bubbles. Okay. Now, let's just do a little collage on it. Put that on the corner right there. That would be cute. Um, got a little bit of, of fun typing there. I was looking all over for, 
for my ruler. It was right there. Right in front, on top of everything. It was in front of my face. Okay, put that on there. That's good for stamping on. <clears throat> I was just thinking it's the day that I'm filming this is a don't freak out before Christmas Day. And I'm going to have to go fold some laundry and then go do that. So far, I've kept up. This is week eight. I can't believe I've kept up. I've amazed myself. Okay. And then I was thinking of putting that there. And I'm not sure what to put at the top of this whole card, but we'll figure something out. use up the scrap that we made, huh? Okay. Got a little bit to cut off there. And then at the top, what would we like? Up here, like a little strip down there. What do I have in my what do I have in my tiny strips bucket here? Ooh, what's this? I've been trying to clean out one bag of scraps a day and oh, I feel like I'm behind already on that on that idea. This is kind of cool. We could go so let's just tear that off. And I'm just going to cut it off right there. And stick that down. Maybe we'll... Always good to give it a little something. So this is on an index card, so it's a little bit thick, but that's okay. And then I was thinking, what about one of these clusters from Nikki? Like right there. We can make this, this part a tag. And then this little tiny cluster. I need to make some of these. These are handy. I'm just going to put that right there. And then that breaks up that solid line. Okay. Put that on there. I think I have an idea for a little topper too. Let's put that like that right there. Oh, that's so cute. That gives it nice dimension too. And then let's use this as a topper. Okay, um, I think I'm just going to glue it. Fun. Okay, and that actually would be super cute, kind of 
sticking out like that or sticking in the in the pocket I'm gonna keep those two together I think okay you guys I think I might have to call it a day my laundry's beeping at me and um, yeah we've got we've got a few minutes but not really enough to do anything that I haven't thought about doing <laughs> ahead of time so thanks everybody so much for watching today i hope the slow stitch was helpful and i appreciate you crafting with me while i got a couple other things done so we'll see you in the next video have a grateful day bye everybody